Howdy friends, this is Mike, I'm an adventurer and a dad, and today I'm on a mission to help you figure out what kind of radio you should use for off-roading and overlanding in groups. First thing I want to do is dispel a few common myths that are going around about the off-road radios that we tested last week. Now, if you haven't seen that test, um, go back and watch that test first so you can hear what I'm hearing when the other guy's talking and you hear what, what uh, they're hearing when I'm talking. So it's, it's pretty good, it's pretty useful to understand exactly how these radios work. Myth number one, FRS radios are worthless toys. They're totally not. Myth number two, my FRS radio is an FRS radio. It, it might not be. Myth number three, CB quality is too bad to be useful. CB quality is actually pretty good and CB radios are very useful. Myth number four, a handheld ham radio is good enough for vehicle use. It's, it's totally not good enough for vehicle use. Myth number five, I don't need a ham license for my rugged radios. You totally do need a ham license for rugged radios. All right, so one of the first things we're gonna go over is the route that we took on our radio test. This, uh, this is Toll Road. Uh, it's South Reno. It goes from South Reno up to the road to Virginia City, Nevada. Um, this is the new road here, Geiger Grade Road. This is the old dirt road. Checkpoint Zero was here on a hill just off the road, and then I had uh, nine checkpoints sort of evenly spaced from the bottom to the top. Total driving distance is 2.9 miles. Um, I know that doesn't sound like a very long distance, but I think uh, 2.9 miles in an environment like this where there's no line of sight and the road's going up and down, and in and out, and there are trees, I think that that's, that's pretty good. Um, I think one of the reasons we didn't get a connection with pretty much anything except for the ham radio at the end is that checkpoint 8 there is the high point and then it dips back down to the end at checkpoint 9. Um, we did have a couple of uh, radio issues at checkpoint five, which is right where it makes the big right-hand turn. And that is kind of one of the farther away places. It's occluded by a lot of the hills in between there. Um, total elevation gain from the bottom to the top is about 1,400 feet, so it rises quite a bit before it gets to the end. It starts about 5,200 feet and ends at about 6,500 feet. That's about it, so it's not a very complex course. Um, and if, certainly if you were going in a group, being that spread out would be unlikely. So you would be able to relay communications a lot more easily um, from vehicle to vehicle. So in that regard, I think it's pretty representative of what normal uh, off-road overlanding groups will be doing um, on, a, on a regular basis on any kind of a day trip or a multi-day trip. CB, and that's your job. That's okay. It might be so the first radio we're going to talk about is the um, Rugged Radios. Um, we used this Rugged Radios uh, RH5R, um, and it, as you can see, if you know anything about um, radios like this, this is a direct clone of the Bofang uh, radio. It's, it's the same case. It's got some different um, buttons and hardware on the, on the outside, but it's basically a, a Bofang radio. It comes pre-programmed with a number of channels. Um, but I believe you can reprogram it and you can get new antennas for these um, and the batteries are removable. But other than that, it's, it's a blue rugged radio for twice the price. It's a dual band VHF UHF radio that has five watts of power. It does in fact require an FCC license if you want to use it in that regard. I believe there's also some uh, commercial band that it operates on that you can get a commercial license for, but you still need some kind of license to be able to use this um, in a vehicle or outside of a vehicle. Even though it's a, um, a ham radio and it form factor is pretty much just like our Yesu, it's clearly not as good as the Yesu um, radio in any of the checkpoints. Um, both power and clarity was not quite as good. It did, however, work better inside the vehicle. We were on channel one on this, which is labeled WXMAN. And uh, near as I can tell, it's hard to tell from, it's hard to get a reading from the unit. Near as I can tell, the frequency on that is 151.265. Uh, so there you go, rugged radio. We're ready. The other radio that we used, uh, we tested, was this Midland GXT. This is a GXT Extra Talk. Now, um, one of the myths that I discussed was that this, uh, my FRS radio is an FRS radio. Well, 
this FRS radio sometimes is not an FRS radio. Sometimes it's a GMRS radio. Um, let's see, so channels 8 to 14 are FRS and are limited to half a watt. Channels 34 to 37 are also FRS and are limited to half a watt. Uh, those channels have a built-in privacy code, so if you're operating on one of those channels, um, you're not going to hear uh, anybody else who's not operating uh, on a privacy code. We were using channel 27, but we were using, which is, a, which is in the GM, GMRS range, uh, but we were using it in low power mode. So we were operating as if it were FRS. So I still consider it to be an FRS, although trying to figure out what the rules and regulations are on some of these radios is quite onerous, uh, given that Midland doesn't really, <laughs> they don't really tell you when you buy these things um, what the regulations and requirements are. So I think it'd be really difficult for um, anybody to actually cite you and make you pay or penalize you in any way, given how difficult it is to figure out what the hell's going on. That being said, this is a really nice radio. It's much more durable and heavy duty and well built than the little yellow ones that I have that I've, I've used um, in the past. Those radios are still quite good and they work really well. This is a whole lot better. Um, so if you did want to get something like this, I believe this one, this is like $100 for a two pack. Um, and they come in something other than camo, if uh, you don't like camo. It has the option to run up to two watts of power in the GMRS range. We were using this on channel 27 in low power mode, and the frequency of that channel is 462.550. Uh, ham radio. So the ASU FT60 uh, is uh, about the, the cheapest high quality VHF, UHF handheld radio that you can get. It's really well made. There are a lot of accessories that go along with it. Um, you can use it to access repeaters. It's got the offsets built in. Um, it's fairly easy to program. Uh, you gotta, if you just download the user manual or a couple of steps to your phone, then you'll always have that. Um, it operates on five watts. It has good battery life. And the frequency that we were using for this test was 146.565. All right, here's the CB. How's that sound? So the CB that we were using is a Cobra 19, um, and I have a Fire Stick 2 antenna that's mounted um, to the hood with a CBI hood mount. I got the 19 because it's a small form factor, and I was able to pull the ashtray out of the Forerunner, and I cut the back of it out and then slid it in there and uh, wired it all up. It was a pretty easy fit. But the CBs, they're really easy to set up. They're really easy to maintain. They don't require a license. And because of all those things, they're ubiquitous. Um, most people have them. It's like the first radio that people will get. So um, as far as being actually useful and usable, um, if, you have, if you have it set up well and you have a good antenna and it's mounted in a good location, and then if you have that antenna tuned, the uh, range and usability of a CB radio is really quite good. And, um, and it's very useful and you should, you should totally use one. Now, my antenna has not yet been tuned. For a real world test of what the difference is on this particular course tuned with a tuned antenna versus untuned, uh, one of our, our viewers graciously offered to come help tune the radio and run the test for us. Um, so in a couple weeks we're gonna do that. Um, and if you wanna see that, stay tuned. So of course there are a lot of other radios that we could have tested that we did not test and a lot of commenters on the video uh, mentioned some of those. Some of those would be uh, GMRS, um, both uh, mobile or uh, handheld. We did not test that, um, although now I realize that we could test handheld GMRS with the um, GXT radios that Ron has. We didn't test uh, mobile uh, ham radio or mobile if you're a ham radio uh, aficionado. The other thing we did not test is a SSB CB, so there'd be a single sideband CB radio. Um, one of the YouTube commenters mentioned that. Um, the research I did on that uh, said that the SSB um, CBs require some particular tuning um, to get them to work because the signal's so low, so we did not test that. We did not test digital mobile radio, which would be like a ham radio, um, but in digital mode. And I'm not familiar with that. I, I know that it's a thing, um, but you get with some of this ham radios, amateur radio stuff, you start getting into the weeds with all the little things that you can do. And I'm, I'm personally not really interested in that aspect of it, the, the hobby aspect of it. Um, 
I'm really only interested in how I can use it for the purposes of uh, communicating when we're off-roading. Um, so I may at some point have more time and decide to get into that, but I haven't right yet. Um, repeaters. So we did not, I mentioned in the video that, that we could get it to a repeater. Um, I didn't test it in the video just because of time and um, it was getting late. So uh, what that is, is basically you take your ham, your amateur radio and you, you broadcast out to the repeater and the repeater listens on a frequency and then it changes frequency and broadcasts that message out. So when you're um, listening, you listen on one frequency and it broadcasts on another and that's um, it's just the way they work. So basically that, that's like a party line. And so you can broadcast out and they have several repeaters in this Reno area. And so uh, you can hit that repeater, it'll broadcast out, all the other repeaters will broadcast the same thing. And any user that's listening in um, the area accessible to those repeaters can then hear you and respond to you. And the signal will, will propagate through the repeaters and get back to you. Um, they're very handy for um, uh, communicating. And if, you, if you're not into ham radio, um, basically people are using it like a party line, like old phones. So you pick up the phone, Back, you know, back when phones were brand new, you'd pick up the phone and everybody had the same line. And so you had to sort of like coordinate with your friends. Well, that's what, that's what ham radio is like on the repeaters. Everybody's talking on the same line at the same time. So you really have to sort of um, be careful and not, not interrupt people. So in that regard, repeaters are good, would be good if like you need to get a signal back to town in an emergency. Um, but they wouldn't really be good, say, if we did a group of 10 to 15 people out on the trail because then we'd be hogging the repeater network all day. So we wouldn't really want to use that. Um, so it's more of a once in a while coordinating people and then saying, let's go to this other channel to talk. Um, so that's how you would use a repeater. Um, but like I said, we didn't test that. Maybe we will in a future video. We've got a temperature drop down to 66. So here are my conclusions. Number one, CB is really the best choice for casual overlanders, off-roaders who want to get out there with a group or with their friends and communicate on the trail. It's easy, it's cost-effective, it's, it's totally good enough, it gets the job done, and you won't really feel like you're missing anything. Um, second, if you are a little more serious and you're going to do longer trips and you want to have a little bit more um, ability to communicate over longer distances and with repeaters and access some of the more technical um, amateur radio options, then definitely amateur radio is certainly going to be the strongest, clearest, and most effective uh, radio communication method in the backcountry. Um, like I said, you have the repeaters for emergencies. You have uh, APRS, which is a way to broadcast um, the GPS locations and data and messages back. It's kind of similar to what you would get with a, a personal locator beacon. You really need a mobile unit to take the best advantage of it, but you can have a mobile unit in your car and you can have the handhelds for walking around. And then if you do excursions or day trips away from the vehicle, you can communicate with camp really effectively over a wide area. Third, uh, FRS radios are cheap and useful way to communicate vehicle to vehicle or hiker to hiker or hiker to vehicle um, in the backcountry, but not all FRS radios are equal. So I would do some research and figure out what a good high quality radio is gonna be. It has good battery life, good build quality, and good power, and get one of those. Lastly, rugged radios are ham radios, or they're commercial radios. They're um, a rebranded Bofang radio that costs twice as much. Uh, if you want to save some money, uh, get a Bofang and get one of the programming um, kits or pro programming apps that you can use to, um, to program channels into it. Um, they're not nearly as good as the Yaesu radios. They're, you know, a, a lot cheaper. So the Bofang radios you can get for 30 bucks, uh, whereas the radio, the FT60 that I have from Yaesu is 150 bucks. So um, you do need a license to use the, the Bofang or the Rugged Radio, either a ham license or a commercial license. So thanks, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting and useful and, I, and let me know in the comments if I got anything wrong or if I left anything out or let me know what you are gonna use um, to communicate in your, in your vehicles 
or hiking or, or whatever you think is best for you. All of this information and more is also presented in narrative form on the blog and uh, also on the Patreon page. If you want to check out the Patreon page, I'll have links to the uh, GPS track that we used and all the other GPS tracks that we, that we um, generate on our trips. You'll have access if you're a patron on Patreon. I, I need a new partner. Carol's got to get the giggle. Special thanks to Ron and Carol um, who helped uh, with this test and brought the uh, the um, rugged radios and the, the nice GXT FRS radios. Um, thank you very much. It's always fun to hang out with you guys. Also check out Will's YouTube channel, uh, Hard Earned Bacon. He's posted some comments. You can just click back to his channel. I'll post a link in the, in the description here too. He's got a cool Jeep Rubicon and he's posting some neat videos on accessories and modifications he's making to that vehicle as well as some of their trips to uh, go four-wheeling, so definitely check those channels out. Well, all right, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching and happy trails.